Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Oder. You might know me in the Pay Your Discord as Jason O. Um, I've been a subscriber of James and Pay Dirt for uh, years now, since the inception. And I actually was with James when he was over at Number Ball. I followed him over here. And uh, I've been a subscriber ever since. And um, I use his tools for all sports, NBA, MLB, NFL, you name it. And uh, it's been a great great uh, resource for me in my game and you know James has asked me to give you all a look into my process what I've been doing for MLB this year and you know things I've looked at that have potentially caused me to run pretty good um, obviously this is not an exact science and never really will be but uh, I think I'm in a position where I can share my process and help provide value to all of you so I'm going to take you through step by step exactly what it is I do um, from every slate start to finish and really what it looks like um big disclaimer up front just want to tell you all uh i am never going to tell you who to play i am never going to suggest who you play what i'm going to do is take you through his tools what i use to help m me make the decisions i want to make um and also after we post this video please feel free to dm me with any questions you may have so starting first looking at all of the screens here that i have open um, you will see that I have quite a few tabs, and throughout this video, I might really include a few more. So, the first tab here, you're going to see, obviously, I have Discord, where we all chat in. Um, I have Roto Grinders Weather Report. I have Twitter. And then I have James's tabs. Every single slate that I do, I set them up in this way. You don't have to do it this way. It, you know, whatever your order of things you want to do is, is, is up to you. How I do things, though, is I start with the Master's Table. I then create four research tabs. I, I make a stack finder tab. I open a MLB player range of outcomes tab, team range of outcomes, the scoring percentages, the contest sims, and the solver. So the first thing I do on every single slate is I really like to work left to right. So oh, actually this is out of place. So I have my Twitter account here where I have underdog open. I have different alerts open where I can go and see just you know starting lineups, Maybe there's going to be some sort of, you know, injury news, you know, whatever it may be. You guys know all that grind from NBA, you know, following tracking this. I just keep it open on the side for baseball. Uh, for MLB now, um, the first thing I always do is I just go look at the weather. I am not a player that really concerns the weather too much. I only want to know if something may or may not be postponed. If something is postponed or looks like it may be postponed, I just want to make sure that I adjust accordingly um, so I can really I can really put a, a risk assessment on it, how much of the game I maybe want to get. Maybe I don't want to get any. So looking at here for tonight's, you know, big slate on Friday, it is uh, – we're looking good here, right? Everything's looking all right. Uh, wins in in Chicago. Yeah, I, you know, I know people, you know, gush about Chicago wins. That's Okay. Um, left to right in uh, at City Fields where the Mets play, and there's some light rain in the Padres in Kansas City. But you know, Roth seems to think everything is going well. I'll give a glance down here and just see if there's any important wind that's going out, anything really super noticeable. Um, and what I mean by noticeable, I try to look for winds 15 per 50 miles per hour or more. I know in places like Wrigley, um, that might be a little bit more valuable if it's 10 or more. But I usually look for 15 or more before I actually start to whether boost people or, or downgrade people. Um, from there, what I do is I then open up the master's table. So I want everybody to know that this is by far the most powerful tool that we have here at PayDirt in order to discover stacks. So looking at this table, I know a lot of people have a lot of questions all the time about how to really read this. The most important table part of the table that you need to really know and what you need to sort by is this column right here the average at uh, average trend this is going to show you the matchup the teams that are in the best matchup for fantasy production it's totally depending upon their opponent and their opponent and what they're willing to you know what they're trending towards giving up so as you can see here when you sort by this way you see pittsburgh philadelphia Toronto, Cleveland, Baltimore, those five teams are in the best spots to really produce fantasy points from a matchup perspective. It doesn't mean that they're going to, and this is also not super pitcher agnostic, it's overall team. So just an example, Pittsburgh, 
is the number one team in this metric right now. But if they were going against Kevin Gosman tonight, you might think twice about stacking them. Or maybe you do want to stack them. It really depends. But this this whole entire column here is really where I start to think about, okay, what teams do I want to think about stacking tonight? This is a very, very big slate, gigantic slate. So you want to naturally consider more teams probably than you would on a regular slate. Me personally, all I want to do is just take stock of the teams that, that, are, that show up here pretty often, you know, early and often. So Pittsburgh, Philly, Toronto, Cleveland, Baltimore, Detroit, Atlanta, New York Yankees, Milwaukee, and the Dodgers. We'll just leave that. These are all these top teams. Now, what other things that you can look at here that are very important is you want to look at what teams are also trending for eight plus, which teams are trending upward. As you can see, when I sort from here to here, it's a little different. When I look at the top teams here that are sorting for eight plus trending, you get Pittsburgh, Toronto, Philly, San Francisco, KCR, Yankees, Colorado, Boss, Washington, and Baltimore. So now when you start to look at the list here that we have, you can maybe start to see what teams are in really the best spots overall. So let me just organize this so it looks a little cleaner. Match up average trend. I love bullet points. So I know I'm a, I'm a nerd. It's okay. Love bullet points. So here now, when you look at, at these, you start to see that there's some team names here that seem to be matching up, right? You start to see that Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Toronto, um, New York Yankees, Baltimore, these are all teams that, that really are hitting each metric. And that's a good sign. Those are teams that you probably should start to consider. Some other things I look at here is this column right here, the R2 to um, op season, as I like to say. This is just a metric based upon how – this will determine how, how the team needs the pitcher quality to be in order to produce fantasy points. If you have a lower number like this, it means that the team is agnostic to whoever's pitching against them, meaning that it, they can even beat up on some aces. They, the quality of pitcher is not dependent upon them scoring runs. If you look at it this way and you sort it by the highest or lowest, this means that these teams are super dependent upon there being bad, a bad starting pitcher and bad pitching in order to, to succeed. So, that's something to consider. I also look at the matchup eight plus trends, but this is actually more of a tiebreaker for me because if they're in a very good matchup and they're already trending trending for eight plus runs, you know, they, they, it, this is kind of, you know, just a bonus on top. But you'll see here a team like Boston, while middling for a matchup average trend score here, they're actually one of the better teams that are trending for eight plus runs. So this means that the matchup is pretty good. But Detroit hasn't really given up some fantasy points, as much fantasy points as some of these other ones. So I might want to look into that, and I might want to try and decipher, you know, is Boston maybe a target? But overall, that's how I look at it. If you want to note some of these other teams here, you definitely can. So those are the teams I look at first. I want to just keep keeping my pool to the right. It doesn't mean I'm definitely using them, but I'm not ruling them out either. Now what I like to do is I do like to go to the scoring percentages tab just to see how how this matches up with the eight plus runs. So I always just do load reset data just because we're we're on a fifteen minute timer. And when you look at these these scores here sorted of by eight plus runs, you see wow, Colorado very high up there. The Dodgers very high up there, no surprise. And then you have a, a pretty big drop off that it's Toronto, Pittsburgh, Atlanta Cleveland, Milwaukee, Chicago, Boston, Minnesota, and so on and so forth. Um, I get a lot of questions in the Discord about, you know, how you decipher these kind of teams in a log jam. How do you determine who's in a really, you know, who should you pick, who should you not? And uh, we'll go through how what I do to really decipher that. But all in all, I just want to take stock here. So. I go and see Colorado, L.A., Toronto. I'm like, wow, okay, those are, you know, L.A. and Toronto were, were definitely showing up, 
you know, in the matchup average trend, but LA wasn't showing up any plus. Um, Colorado wasn't really showing up in either. So that's something I'm definitely going to want to look into. So now that I see that, I take a, a quick glance at ownership. Um, this might be an unpopular opinion, but especially on a slate this size, I really do not care for ownership as much. Um, I don't mean that you should not care about it in its totality, but I am not making or breaking my decision on simply on simple team ownership. This is such a big slate that it's going to be it's going to be very hard to even be duped. But you do want to have some lower owned pieces to propel you past other chalk pieces. Um, but I just wanted to make sure right now that you guys know I am not looking at ownership at all for any decision making. Now, next, what I do is I want to go into the research tabs and I really want to put together um, the pitchers and hitters to try and see, you know, if there's any credence to what I am seeing in both tables. And maybe I can try and find a sneakier spot. So my first tab, I always do bullpen data. My second tab, I always do pitcher stats versus left-handed hitters. Then pitcher stats versus right-handed hitters. And then I set up my hitters tab, and I always want to hit the hit, click hitters here, and I click specific games. I'm going to leave that for right now. First thing I do when I go look at the bullpen data, um, there's a few things I want to look at here. Number one, the number one thing for me here, and look, everybody has different criteria, but bullpen arms are so, so they're so up and down, and you never really know who's going to come in. You can't really predict based on the scenario. I mean, a closer, obviously, you can. Um, if there's a shutdown night or they're predict, if, you know, protecting a lead. But you don't really know who's going to come in. If you want to check bullpen data and see how many guys have been used, you know, in a certain time frame, sure. But ultimately, I'm worried about who puts the most amount of batters on base. That's very, very important because, obviously, if you get on base, you're in a position to score runs. And the hitters that come up to bat are in a position to bring those hitters home. So, I look at this here, and I'm seeing Toronto, Colorado, Chicago, Kansas City, Miami, all sort of by ex-WOBA, um, pretty bad, right? Really bad. Also, you can look at the, the ex-slugging. You'll see Toronto is, like, way ahead of everybody. So now, when you think back to Pittsburgh, right, and you see that Pittsburgh is, is trending trending very well in the matchup average trend. They're, uh, they're trending heavily for a 31, 31% you know, score and trending A-plus runs. And also, they're one of the better teams here in the range of outcomes. I can tell you already, Pittsburgh is 110% is going to be a team I'm going to consider. Um, when you look at all those matchups metrics so much, I, I almost don't even care who they're facing. You've got to consider them. Um, but I do want to look at, you know, pitcher that they're facing, the handedness, the, you know, all the stats. But So that's what I do. I primarily look at the, exp the X slugging and the X woba. If you want to look at X batting average, you can. Batted balls in play, their average are given up. That's totally fine. Um, as you can see here at the bottom, you're going to see some teams that have pretty elite bullpens like Cleveland, the Dodgers, the Yankees, Baltimore, that typically don't give up a lot of fantasy production. Um, but I am curious to look into Colorado and why they look so good because LA's bullpen looks pretty stout based on the recent sample. So now, um, when I look at individual pitchers, um, what I want to do now is I want to take stock of, of the starting pitchers on the slate. I want to look at them, and this is where I really start to not consider ownership, but I want to know what kind of guys are, are going to be owned, um, at what's their, what's their price tag, and also, you know, the ownership itself, is it prohibitive? And I want to make a determination on how I feel about it. This is going to be very, very crucial for when we start to build lineups. So... Give this a chance to load. James and the models. So when I look here, I always, if you're a GPP player and you're, you're playing for first um, and you're in a decent sized contest, I always sort by ceiling. Like I know median is important, but I sort by ceiling because I want to know who really can get me there. Okay, there it goes. Now it's loading. While oh, that's loading, um, I'm going to go show you what I look at in the pitcher metrics themselves. So I know that um, we look at true average a lot, and that's something that, that's pretty important of how many hits they're giving up um, and what, how many hits they should be giving up and whatnot. While that is very important, hits are good, but home runs and extra base hits are better. 
Um, on FanDuel, I think that this is a much stronger metric to consider because they tend to give more points for base runners getting on, you know, um, scoring runs, steals, like more base path activities are, are worth a little bit more as opposed to DraftKings where a home run is, is really king. So you want to sort by true average, you're going to see Aaron Nola. You know, he's not, he's not on the slate tonight, but you'll see Marcus Stroman, Sixto Sanchez, Jose Berrios. So sort of by true average to left-handed hitters, I'm already seeing that, you know, there's some guys here that really, really, really can, can give up some hits. The real important metrics here for me, though, that I always take into account is I want to look at your ex your expected slugging, and I want to look at your ex per home, your ex home runs. Um, this is really important, and this column especially especially is very important because you're going to see that there's some guys that are due for some serious home run um, uh, regression, and you're also going to see that there's a lot of guys that that are expected to give up a lot of home runs and have already did. And you're also going to see which guys should maybe be giving up less. So right away, the first thing you notice is Jose Barrios. You look at this and just sort of by this, you see he's striking out a decent amount of lefties. He's not walking them. Should be giving up a lot more hits. Um, his X slugging is like kind of middling. So, you know, you kind of want to like, all right, he's not giving up a ton of power. But his expected batting average is pretty low. Means, all right, he may be running a little bit hot in the hits department. But he's giving up a lot of hits. He's given up 10 home runs in the split. He should have been giving up 14. He has a .08 home run, expected home run per plate appearance. He should be giving up to lefties. You want to attack this guy with lefties right now. He is going to blow up soon. Um, when you look at Aaron Nola, granted he's not on the slate, I get the same vibes here. His expected slugging is not high, but he should really have some serious home run regression. So don't be surprised that St. Louis or the next team he plays, you know, really hit some hard from this side of the plate. But when I go down the list, I see Marcus Stroman should be giving up a lot of expected home, you know, eight expected home runs, three more than than his original home runs. That's a lot of regression. Um, his expected batting average is not good. It's close to his true average, 0.29. The expected slug is 0.49. He's not striking batters out, really, and he is giving up a ton of walks. So right away, I'm looking at this, and the first thing I'm seeing is San Francisco – Lefties, you should probably go and consider in your lineup. Pittsburgh, lefties. And you really want to go down the list here, and you want to you want to try and pick out, you know, spots that you can attack. When I go and see that a combination of expected slugging is high, X home runs is high, I, and they're not striking out a lot of people, I, I definitely want to attack that person. I also want to attack that person if they have a high strikeout rate because it means they're throwing strikes and they're putting some balls in where they shouldn't be and, you know, they're going to get hit. Pablo Lopez, you know, the 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 darling of the discord here who uh, just gets, you know, pummeled every single start when he really shouldn't. Um, he's not going to regress much worse than he is, right? So he's got the home runs here and he's got – Expected home runs of eight, that's about the same. He's not walking them. His true average is very low. Expected slugging is middling. But he's given up a lot of hits, and he's given up about as many home runs as you think. So maybe he's running bad and right now, and maybe that's a, that's a bounce-back spot for him. But we're going to keep looking, and we'll see. Um, you know, Graham Ashcraft, Mike Glisson out on the slate. Brian Wu, you know, this guy's had a really good start to the year, but has a high true average to lefties, not a lot of power, and expected home runs, you know, should regress there. So maybe some LA lefties. You get where I'm going. When I sort by expected slugging, that's when it's going to get a little bit more gross for people. You start to really open it up here, and you start to see Marcus Stroman, who we talked about before. But Luis Severino, look at him, right? High walk rate to lefties, 15% K percentage, high X slugging. It's it's not looking good for him against lefties. Ronald Blanco, the highest pitcher on today's slate. You know, I start to look at this, and you start to think, hmm, okay, is there maybe a way that I can incorporate Minnesota lefties in? I'm not making any decisions right now outside of Pittsburgh because everything just lined up too well, but I'm starting to think to myself, all right, like where, where could I go here? Um, you'll see Jordan Hicks here, too, giving up a lot. Dakota Hudson to the Dodgers, that's not good with that lineup and the lefties they have. Kenta Maeda, who, you know, who's going against those lefties in Boston, really not good. So all in all, the, there's some strong targets on this slate. So you could go after and get some left-handed bats against two Tanner Bybee, Tobias Myers, Walker Bueller. Um, but so now let me go back to – oh, look at that, James. Your pitcher projections are still not loaded. 
Okay. Let me just sort by picture. All right, so when I sort by picture, I'm sorting by ceiling, as I mentioned before. Now is where I'm going to look at ownership, too. So, obviously, Dylan Cease, 9,800, he's been really good to start the year. Um, he's going against San Diego. He's got a pretty good projection for 9,800. That's somebody I want to, want to look at in the sheets. Look at Pablo Lopez. This is somebody who we just talked about who may be running a little bit worse than he actually is, and you know he should regress maybe a little bit back to normal. He's got a fantastic projection for, for 9K. It's, and he's very low-owned at 8.21 in GPPs, as much as I hate to say it. He should be he should be a target of yours. Um, Jose Soriano, you have LA you know uh, LAA here. He's um he's projecting phenomenally as a value right now um, at seventy three hundred. So is Aaron Seval, and then you have guys like Tanner Houck, who still projects well. Tanner Bybee projects well. Ronaldo Lopez not bad. Michael Walker looks like a value, and Tobias Myers looks like a supreme value at seven at sixty nine hundred over 2x's projection here, his 2x's salary. It's pretty impressive. Um, so right now I'm just looking at these pictures and I'm trying to see, okay, from a ceiling perspective and ownership perspective, where is it going to be? Um, I look at ownership and I see Walker Buehler is going to be the chalk. With Colorado projecting well, and we're going to look into why, th this could be a prime a prime leverage spot. Jose Soriano, totally get it, 7,300. We're going to look into see if he looks like really, really good chalk. Just write this down. I always write notes for myself so that way I can just go and see for myself um, and take a look at, like, the guys I need to look into and see if they're going to blow up if they're not. Um, I want to do a deeper dive into Pablo Lopez, too. That would be pretty interesting. Um, and then I'll look at Bivy, Hawk, Hauk, and let's look at Dylan Cease. I'm going to look at those for the purpose of this video. It's a 13-game sleep, so you should be looking into more. Um, just expanding your pool for at least consideration. So now... That is the team range of outcomes tab. We go back to the pitchers. So I looked at it from the left-handed side. I want to look at it from the right-handed side, too. Um, when I look at it from the right-handed side, I sort by true average, Walker Bueller. Oh, boy. Yeah, that, that's that's not good. He's given up a lot of – looks like he should be giving up a lot more hits to righties. His expected slugging is, is kind of respectable. His walk his uh, strikeout rate's not fantastic, but it's not great either. He's walking guys at, at, a, at a amount – but look at this. He's expected to give up six more home runs in this sample. This is what he should have been giving up. This is what he has given up. His ex home run for plate appearance is out of control. I, I don't think I've ever seen one this, this high this year. So right away, I'm saying to myself that Walker Bueller is somebody you, you're going to want to pick bats against. Is Colorado going to make him pay? I don't know. But at least you know going forward, Walker Bueller is somebody – you know that you know. I see that you want to maybe attack with right-handed hitters. Go look at him against left-handed hitters just to make sure. I see Walker Buehler against lefties here. He's got 22% K percentage, which is a little better in the right side. He's not walking people. True average is low, but when he gets hit, he should be getting hit harder, and his expected batting average should be much higher. Um, but his expected home run should actually come down. So I look at this and I say, you should really be attacking him with both sides of the plate. And you want to really, you know, attack him with both. It looks like he could be hit pretty hard. Um, let's go see now if Colorado is a team that we should be prioritizing. So um, when I look at the teams in the hitter sheets, it's very important that you constantly refresh this page. Um, as starting lineups get released, this gets updated, and you will see um, different names here potentially. So there's a few things I look at here. Number one, I want to look at the player's expected slugging. I want you to think of this as you're almost matching up um, teams' expected slugging, their players' expected slugging, with their pitcher that they're facing, their expected slugging and expected home runs. So I look here, I see Ryan McMahon, Jay Cave, Brenton Doyle, Ezekiel Tovar, all have an above-average expected slugging in, this, in the last 30-day uh, split against right-handed hitters. Um, I go and look here, though, and I see they also strike out a lot, right? I see the X home run for pay, uh, plate appearance. This is this is cool to see just how often these guys should be hitting home runs every time they get up at bat. But the two biggest columns for me that are the most important, expected slugging and event per plate appearance. The event per plate appearance takes into account everything from hits, walks, stolen bases, 
Um, this is everything that they do on the base pass too. So a guy like Brenton Doyle, who we know can you know steal a lot of bags, right? 15 stolen bases, he's going to be on there. You're going to find guys that walk a lot in in this column too. Um, anything that's close to 10% or above is, is considered a very, very strong fantasy player. So um, when I sort by this, I see Ryan McMahon, Jay Cave, Doyle, Tovar, like, all right, all these guys have a nice expected slugging. I look at the rest of them, and, you know, Elias Diaz is okay. It's not bad. Charlie Blackman, you know, isn't bad. He's not striking out at all. So you could put him in, Chris Bryant, um, strike it out a lot, but is due to really hit some more home runs. Um, overall, if this was the lineup that you were playing today, I automatically would say I got to have a Rocky stack. Um, I would five-man it, but automatically I'm, I'm thinking, you know what, Rockies are, are a good play today. So I'm going to go stack here. You can write stack however you want to organize it. I usually write either stack, and I'll put like four or five-man. I'll bold out the teams. But that's how I determine who I want to attack and, and what players I want to use. I do not care about individual bats. I want to play what really fits. But ideally, correlation and by expected slugging are super important. Um, it's also important when you're looking at these sheets that you want to incorporate sample size too. If you see somebody with 10 plate appearances here and this number is really, really high, you, you might want to second guess it. But also, it means they've had 10 quality at bats and some really good hacks at the plate. Maybe you haven't realized it yet. Um, so that is how I would determine a team that I am stacking. Some other ones we can look at, just for example, we wanted to look into Jose Soriano as a pitcher, but who else did I want to look at for offense? Um, all right, let's take a look at Toronto. So Toronto is playing Pittsburgh, and we have Bailey Falter, who's pitching for Pittsburgh. So against lefties, just looking at Bailey Falter here to start, um, as we know, Toronto doesn't really have a ton of great lefties, and that's okay. Uh, not striking them out much at all, but he's not walking them either. True average is middling, you know, 0.27. Expected slugging is not terrible. Batting average should be even a little bit lower. Not giving up a ton of hits. And he's basically giving up as many home runs as he should. So I guess left-handed left -handed hitters, Bailey Falter is actually a decent pitcher from, from what this sample is showing. I guess right-handed pitchers, right-handed hitters, it's a much different, much different ball game. So – I'm just going to sort here, go by the team, Bailey Falter, against right-handed bats, 11% K percentage, you know, an 8% 8 per, 8 walk rate, you know, that's approaching, you know, close to close to 10. So this isn't fantastic based upon, you know, how, how much power and how many hits he's giving up. True average of 0.31, his expected batting average isn't much better. Expected slug at is 0.58, and he should have been given up, he should have given up 13 home runs, and he's only given up eight. You want to attack the fuck out of Bailey Falter. I don't even need to look at almost anything else to know that I probably should 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 consider Toronto. So put Toronto, I'm going to bold out Toronto here. So that way we have that team in consideration. Now if I'm looking at the lineup I want to build, I'm going to go to Toronto here. All this loads. God damn it, James. All right, I will come back to this one. Um, what what else I like to do, too, while I – after I look at a few different teams and I start to get a feel for who's projecting well, who's not, um, you know, maybe there's some credence behind certain projections. Like, for instance, just to give you all my synopsis and everybody can play who they want, um, Colorado, the, the eight-plus run score – is really dependent upon Walker Bueller just not being good. Um, I do think that's a little bit of a riskier spot, though, because they strike out a ton. Walker Bueller has a history of being a very good pitcher. So this is a feast or famine. I would play Colorado, but I wouldn't just lock them. And I think that's important to note. These scoring percentages tabs, these should be used as a guide. I do not look at these as verbatim, saying, oh, 26%, I need uh, uh, LAD. Eight plus runs, I got to have all the LAD. That's not the way I think. Same thing with Colorado. 28. Oh, actually, they, they dropped a little bit, but not by much. 27.5 LAD, 26 um, Colorado, Toronto, 
I consider these teams, but it doesn't mean that I, I'm definitely going to surefire have them on a main lineup or that I'm going to, you know, you know, be over the field on them. Uh, very important to consider that. But as you look, we looked at, you know, two pitchers so far, and you see Walker Bueller, Colorado's up here, and Toronto's up here in their third. Toronto being at, you know, lower ownership is actually kind of, that's kind of cool to think about considering what LAD is going to be priced. But let's go back here. So Toronto in the split um, against Bailey Falter as a lefty. Look at these expected slugging numbers. These are just, these are just stupid, right? Davis Schneider, this is the projected lineup that could change, but Davis Schneider, Ernie Clement, Vlad Guerrero, Justin Turner, Danny Jansen, and Bo Bichette. But really these one, two, three, four, five, these five are fucking raking against left-handed pitching. They should all be batting at least 300. Their expected slugging is insane. Only one of them is striking out a lot. And outside of Ernie Clemente, you expect this to maybe change. He's got a small sample size here. Um, a lot of expected home run potential here. So Toronto, 100% of like a, a target of mine. Uh, but even when you go down the list here, like Bo Bichette up top, not bad, right? 0.43, you know, expected slugging. It's not terrible. Um, Strike it out a little bit, but not bad. IKF, you know, the Sheets Darling, who always projects fantastic, 100%, you should definitely consider. And George Springer, middling in this, but honestly, man, if you're stacking any five Toronto, I don't think you can go wrong today. And we even look at Kiermaier. Low batting average, expected batting average, low slugging, but when he gets on, he's, he's walking, he's swiping bags. You, you know, one through nine, consider everybody on Toronto today. So I already put Toronto in, and we'll do one more team to look at just as an example of who I want to, who we should maybe look into. So going back to this sheet, Philly, Cleveland, Baltimore, Detroit. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at Baltimore for a second. That's actually a, a decent one I think we should look at. So go to Baltimore. They're playing Tampa Bay. And they're going up against Aaron Seaval. So when you look at Seaval, and where's the projections? Seaval in our models are the fourth highest. He's got the fourth highest projected ceiling. He's coming in at 4.25 percent in ownership, and this may change, but that's that's incredibly low. He's projecting as a sixth value. So I'm seeing Baltimore as a team that is it a very good fantasy production matchup? So I want to look into that and say, okay, is there some credence to maybe taking Seaval? Should I maybe, should we maybe attack him? I look at this here and I say, okay, they're going up against Aaron Seaval, Seaval here against left-handed hitters. And, you know, Baltimore has a lot of left-handed powers. You all know Gunnar Henderson, Ryan O'Hearn, um, Santander, you know, Colton Kowser, all those guys. He's striking out 35% of lefties he's facing. He's walking them at 7% middling. True average is fucking insanely good, 0.18. Expected slugging, you know, that that's about average. That's okay. Expected batting average should come up a little bit. His hits are right in line, home runs are right in line, and his, his power should actually be going down, uh, his power that he's giving up. He should be giving up less home runs, but relatively the same. When I look at him against right-handed bats, here he's a much, much different pitcher. He's got 13% strikeout rate, 8% walk rate. His true average is 300. That's not good. His expected slugging for seven. That's not good. He, his bat average is bad. He should be giving up more power to the right-handed side of the bat. So when I look at Baltimore's lineup now, I'll open up a DraftKings tab too, just so I can maybe see if their starting lineup is in maybe today. So here when I look at the, the Baltimore offensive, you know, batters and whatnot, obviously Gunnar Henderson always looks like a fucking god in this. That's why he's 6,100. You know, you don't really need to look at him to see he's a good play. But he's cracking against righties right now, absolutely cracking. Um, he's sick. Ramon Uri um, Urias, he's a right-handed hitter, 0.54 expected slugging, high expected batting average, not striking out a lot in the split that he struggles with, that's pretty damn good. Ryan O'Hearn, yeah. Colton Cowser, yeah, striking out a lot. Adley Rutschman, same thing. Mountcastle, 
man, kind of middling but striking out a lot. Santander, left-hand side of the plate, Jorge Mateo. So what I'm getting from this and what I'm gathering is he's going to be seeing six lefties, and he's actually much, much better against lefties than he is righties. I actually think this makes Aaron Seaval a very, very strong GPP play today. Um, it, it just if you even want to look at like strikeout rates here too, um, they got four guys that are striking out a decent clip, um, and the righties here don't really scare you. Like Mountcastle, Mateo, they're, they're okay. They're not bad. You know, Urias looks like he may get to him, but if he if he kind of runs good through the lefties, he's going to have a very, very good day. So I think Aaron Seaval is somebody that you really should maybe go target. And Seaval to my list of pitchers. I need somebody that's going to be in consideration. Um, and I'm going to say should play him. Or you can even take a mini stack against. Let me pull up. See if Baltimore's lineup changed. I've done lineups in. Yep, same lineup to a T. So. That's okay. He's definitely somebody you want to consider. Um, anybody, any other pitchers that you want to look through, that, that's what I would do. The last one I actually want to look through, and then I'll get some more looking at lineups, how I, how I build them, how I make stacks and all of that. Um, I want to look at Jose Soriano. He, he's projecting as a sick value, and he should be pretty high owned. I want to figure out if he's good shock or bad shock. So first, quickly, I look at Jose Soriano. He's going up against Seattle. Right away, we already know they, they strike out a lot. But he's striking out 23% of lefties. Walk rate, not bad, but not great either. Um, true average is pretty good. Expected slugging is fantastic. Expected so batting average is even better. Um, he should be giving up a few more home runs, but he really should be, shouldn't be giving up much more power than he is. Against the right-handed hitters, Jose Soriano, striking out a massive clip, 29%. Not walking many guys. True average is fantastic. Expected slugging fantastic. All these numbers are great, right? So right away, I'm thinking Jose Soriano. If Seattle looks like a – if Seattle doesn't look like they they grade out well here, have a ton of power, whatever it may be, he's going to be a chalk option and probably chalk option you should consider. So I look here in the split. Yeah, you have Dominic Canzone who hit a home run last night. Um, I, it's actually against Verlander. But here too – He's striking out a ton, 26%. That's above average. Julio Rodriguez from the right side, above average. Mitch Hanniger, above average. Cal Rowley, that's wild. Uh, Luke Rayley, wild. Josh Rojas, not striking out a ton. That's okay. But his power is down. He should, he's not, he doesn't have a great average. Um, expected batting average. Dylan Moore, striking out a ton. Uh, Ty France, you know, not a lot of power, striking out a ton. And J.P. Crawford, same thing. So when I look at this here, anything can happen on any given day. So, Soriano can just put the ball in place a little bit wrong and, and things can go wrong. And that's possible. You know, they have some decent guys with some decent expected home run numbers. But overall, not a ton of power and a lot of strikeout potential. Jose, he, he's just a guy you eat today, in my opinion. Right away, I'm thinking you just, you just eat the fucking shock. Eat the fucking shock. That's it. So... Now from there, we looked at some hitters. We looked at some, some pitchers. Now I want to take a look at what contest I'm playing and what really the, the Sims are giving me. So first and foremost, before I get to that, I want to take a look at the Stack Finder. Um, if you want to run the Stack Finder with your own individual teams to figure out the best side to stack, you can. But really what this does is that it puts together the best stacks of each team at, at the ownership. Meaning if you're playing this lineup at this ownership, th this is what it should, this is the best lineup you could play. So when I do run stack analysis, I don't like to put any teams. I just want it to naturally give me what it's going to give me. Colorado, look at this. And they're not, and I'm assuming it's probably because they're cheap, but Colorado, Colorado five mans are the best value stacks you can play on DraftKings. Looks like Washington also but mostly Colorado and some Washington. This is very important to note because when we go, you know, put some teams in later and you start to use the optimizer, you, you'll see what I'm talking about and why this is important. Um, I'll take a look at the, at the top scoring teams, but I really don't deal with this until I go to the optimizer and I'll, I'll show you how. Um, this hasn't changed. Contest Sims. So now the contest Sims are very important. 
Um, when I'm running these, what I want everybody to know is that this is also a guide. This doesn't mean that you should be playing all the players in here all the time that show up the most, um, especially hitters, because hitters are very volatile. With pitchers, you can definitely take a little bit more of a of a stronger stance on. But it's very important to just get a feel for what is going to be the correct fit within the contest you're playing. So I'm playing the I'm playing the uh, the thirteen dollar you know uh, qualifier today. Um, I got seventy five lineups in there, um, so I'm going to actually set this to custom once this starts loading. God damn it, James! Any day now. I'm getting impatient. Sorry. So I like to do custom just because I, I know we have a lot of um we have a lot of, you know, differing opinions of like what's a medium sized contest versus a large and whatnot. There's five thousand people in it. Um the field it's a thirteen dollar contest, but I think that if you're joining this contest you you probably are a player who's played quite a bit. Um, I'm going to put this at average just because um, a lot of casual players still have the barrier of entry to get in, but I think you're going to have some pros in there too. So I'm going to do run contest sim. Any day now. While that loads, I'll take you all through what I do on the solver too. Um, so when I use a solver, um, I want to make this very, very clear here too. Um, you have a lot more control over this than you really think, but you also want it to, you want it to, to give you the, the best projection, you know, best projected lineups that it can. You have to remove your bias when using this. So you can put your teams in and whatnot, and we'll, we'll get to that, but I um, just so want everybody to know, like, whatever this is telling you to do and telling you to play, like, you, sh you should probably consider it. So, first and foremost, I just want to run one lineup. I don't touch anything, no parameters. I ran just on projection. Dylan Cease, Pablo Lopez, you know, Colorado, Colorado, Toronto, Toronto, Colorado, Colorado. It naturally gave me a four-man Colorado stack on projection without any sort of run. If you're in a contest that's large and you're playing for first, I would run on ceiling. And I would run on projected 50% ceiling here. This one, if you are playing like a a single entry, you know, 100, the 121 maybe, that, that's what I would put in here. It's, it's a small enough contest where your projection still may win out. And you don't have to get as different. But I go into my settings here, the salary cap. Um, this is a preference too. I like to keep mine very high, um, especially on a contest like on a day like this where there's 13 games. Um, I leave about $400 just so that way I know if there's some swaps I need to make, that's okay. Um, if you're hand building lineups, this is important too, because you don't have to take every single lineup and just play it as is. Um, if you're running like a, a five, a, you know, you want to see what a five, five, uh, two, one looks like. You could also just correlate it and make it a five, three if you want, but this is just for flexibility in case I want to swap players. Um, I'm going to leave it at 100% because I just want to see what I'm going to get. So I put that here. For stacks, I'm going to select 5, 5, 3, 5, 2. On smaller slates, I will also select a 4, 3. But for today, a big slate, you want to correlate as much as possible. I do not do anything past this. Click out of it. I'm going to run it on ceiling because I'm playing a contest where it's first or last today. Go with one. Line up by ceiling. It gave me a five-man Rocky stack with Davis Schneider, Reynolds, and Adam Duvall with Cease and Soriano. So that right there gave you a pretty good, a pretty good single entry lineup if you wanted to take it. But this kind of confirms our thoughts, right? We, Colorado looked like a target because of how bad Bueller's been. Um, Toronto has looked very, very good, and Davis Schneider is the best hitter in the research sheets for Toronto. Um, and we saw that uh, Pittsburgh, is, you know, Barrios is getting lit up by, by lefties. Pittsburgh's got some really good ones. Um, and Duvall, yeah, he's going against a lefty today in Sears, so I get that. Next thing I do is I set this for 150 lineups. I set my max player exposure 
to 65, and then I do unique players too. The uh, reason why I do this is I wanted to now just give me all of the five mans that, that I really, really I wanted to I wanted to basically tell me if you're running a portfolio of five mans based on ceiling, who should you have? So I'm gonna let that run, I'm gonna let that do its thing. All right, the Sims here are done. I look here. Overall exposures. You see Soriana C uh C Schneider. Sound familiar? It's because that's up here. This picture exposures. I see Soriano, Cease, Pablo Lopez, Tanner Hawk, Ronaldo Lopez, and Tanner Bybee. So notice how Cval is a guy that um, we looked at who could be a pretty, you know, maybe a pretty good leverage play today. He he's not a. He doesn't seem like he's as needed in a contest like this. Brian Wu, absolutely not. Jose Soriano looks like you should definitely play him, and you should definitely play Cease. Um, Pablo Lopez. Looks like you can gain a pretty big edge here. Tanner Hawk, yeah, a little bit of an edge. And Ronaldo Lopez, Tanner Bybee, kind of middling, but about the same. Um, when I look at the most projected owner pitchers, uh, Walker Bueller does not show up at all. So I'm assuming from here, when I go to teams, I'm assuming Colorado might be there. So I look here, Toronto, just like we expected, LAD, yep. Miami, that's interesting. So now I'm looking at, I now want to go look into Miami. I'll do, you know, maybe we'll just do Miami with a question mark. Oh, actually, I'll put on the other one. Fuck it. Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of riffing along. It's the first video I've ever made. So now, Miami? We'll see. Boston there, too. Boston's third. Boston? Okay. Texas? Yup. So now I want to go look at these for the contest I'm playing. I want to see, wow, well, okay, these teams could be in there. And also you have Minnesota, who we talked about maybe going after uh, Blanco a little bit. You can do that, Atlanta, Pittsburgh, San Francisco. So some of the top teams here, like Colorado, barely shows up. Pittsburgh shows up, but not a lot. Toronto shows up plenty, Tor LAD, Miami. So automatically what I'm thinking is, these two are probably the main five stacks you need, and you're probably going to need a mini from Miami to make it work. Um, just off the cuff, I don't know how expensive these, these teams are, but I know they're probably rather expensive. They're definitely very expensive. They're, they're big bats. Um, Duran and Devers are probably very expensive. Atlanta, obviously, you know, expensive all, all over the fucking place besides the back of the lineup. And in Texas, that's one I definitely want to look at um, it's just outside of Seager, Adolis, and Simeon. I don't know how they're really priced. But let's see if our run is done. Yep, our 150 lineup run is done. So first thing I do is I here I have the position toddler. I want to select pitchers. And if I was keeping pitchers at 65% market cap, I'm seeing that Pablo Lopez, Dylan Cease are there, the max that they're allowed to be. Soriano's pretty damn close. And Aaron Seaval is showing here too. Um, when I'm seeing that there's two pitchers here at this price tag that are showing up, it, it's, you should probably start looking at some combinations of where you can maybe play both of them. Maybe you want to make click one and play with one of these two. And if you want to play these two together, you can, you just better have the value bets to make it work. When I go to team stacks, so look at this, Colorado, a five, 65% of the five man stacks are Colorado, 26 of Toronto. The next highest is Actually, Pittsburgh at 5%, and then Atlanta at 3 I'm assuming because of Atlanta's price tags. And then you have some, some minis of the A's, Sox, and Dodgers. So right now, cost considered and by ceiling, Colorado Rockies, Toronto Blue Jays, Pittsburgh is probably where you want to be. So now, when I'm building a portfolio, the other big question I get here is determining the stacks that I want to play. How do I get them in? So you want to put the stacks that you want to consider in – this section, and it will only give you stacks of those teams. So Colorado, we talked about. Pittsburgh. You know, for, for the sake of the video length, we'll throw the other ones we wanted to consider in there. So Texas, we'll throw in there. LED, Miami. We'll do Baltimore. Actually, no, Baltimore, we didn't want to consider. Uh, Boston, we, were, we thought we maybe wanted to go look into. And just for the purpose of this video, we'll leave it at that. So here, Pitt, Toronto, 
Texas, Miami, LAD, Boston. And you just do the same thing here. Now, I want to do something that will really, really give me a finer look into which stacks the optimizer likes the most, especially for when I'm running on ceiling, I want to come in first in a contest. I want to set the max stack percentage here when I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stacks in play. I want to set this to about, I want to set it to about 20%. If I have more teams in here, I definitely want to set the max stack percentage a little bit lower. Um, I've mentioned to some people in the Discord that when I do this and I'm running a 150, um, I'm a guy who likes to have more offenses in play. I do not eliminate any batters. Mr. CL86 thinks I'm crazy for it, but I will never remove a team at all ever for consideration um, just because batters are so volatile. You never know if they're going to go up or down. Um, they're, you know, They might explode and they might, you know, go 0 for 5. So I don't leave anybody out. I want to maybe catch lightning in a bottle if I can. For this purpose, we're going to do 20% just so that way we can see what stacks it prefers. Also, while I'm doing that, I go look at the pitchers now, and I want to curate my pitching pool. Um, I could sort by value. You want to use James's sheets for this. You definitely can. But me personally, just for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to walk through the people I know I'm not going to want. And... I'll look at these to really make that determination. It's so like Falter, Hudson, everybody who's at the bottom here, like you, you really don't want. Um, anybody that's not a value, right? So like I look at a value as like if, if you're not at least close to 2Xing or, or above 2Xing your salary, um, I kind of think you shouldn't be considered. Also, if you're just all your metrics stink and you're just not a good pitcher, I don't want you there either. So I'm going to remove just for the purpose of this video, just everybody here at the bottom. So, Fetty, Gon, Falter, Blanco, sorry if you hear my dog in the background, he's barking his head off, Ryan Wu, Corbin, Sears, even though pitching against Atlanta, kind of a cheat code right now, Berrios, Louis Montgomery, Sixto Sanchez, I'll take out Stroman, take out Dakota Hudson, Kenta Maeda, and We'll leave the pool there for now. Everybody else kind of seems to be a decent value. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it again. I'm going to let it give me what I need, what I need it to give me. I'll let it do its thing. Um, some other things now I'm going to go look at in the interim while that's running, because obviously we're on a time crunch for a slate. Um, maybe I go look into some of these other teams now. So let's go take a look at Texas. So Texas is going against Miami, and Sixto Sanchez is on the bump for Miami. Terrible against lefties, low K, high walk, high true average. x slugging not, not terrible, but batting average not good. Not giving up a ton of power, but it might be just a sample size thing here. Um, against right-handed hitters, Miami, yep, low K percentage, not walking much. Lower true average, but expected slugging is rather high. And he hasn't really seen home run regression. I, I kind of want to bet on the fact that he is going to see it. Um, he's not walking guys. Sorry, he's not, he's not striking guys out. He's getting up a lot of contact. So somebody's going to get him soon. And with these power numbers against righties, that, that's very tough. Um, when I go back to the bullpen, and I want to just maybe look at, look at uh, Miami's bullpen here. Uh, Miami's bullpen, expected slugging, a little above average. True average not great. Woba, oof, not good. They put a lot of put a lot of people on base. So right away, I'm thinking, all right, Texas may be a really good play, um, just because the bullpen seems like it's not great. Six of Sanchez looks like he's not great. So obviously Corey Seager's been on some some fucking tear, and he's been crushing it. So he's a guy you want to consider. But after him, it, it's a pretty big drop off in regards to you know, expected fantasy production here. Leody Tavardis, you know, 420 expected slugging. That's pretty good. Not striking out a ton. Adoles Garcia, this is kind of shocking because we think of him as a really, really big bat. Striking out a lot. Wyatt Lingford, yeah. Um, I look here. There's only one really big K guy in their lineup. 
Um, they have some good expected home run rates, but they only have one guy who was really striking out above average again in the split against righties. Um, I think you can consider Texas. Do I think it's the smash that probably other people think? No, I think it could also be a landmine. So um, just looking at ownership here, Texas is middle of the pack. They have a very, very low, you know, Levex score. So right then and there, like, can you consider Texas? You can. Um, for any future runs, though, I'm, I'm probably going to probably gonna take the bat. Um, Miami. Going against Jose Urena. Not striking out a lot of lefties. It walks, eh. True average. He, eh, it's not fantastic. Not giving up a lot of power. And he's kind of kind of doing what he should be here, so that's okay. Um, against righties, Miami, Sixto Sanchez. Uh, sorry, it's Sixto Sanchez. Jose Arena, same thing. Low case, higher walk rates. A lot of expected slugging, though. And he's given up some home runs and still should be giving up some. So maybe you look at the righties from Miami as a mini. I look here, Jesus Sanchez, Otto Lopez lo looks like a sick play, 0.460. Um, but no, a lot of their lefties are, 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 a lot of their righties are not great in the split. You can still play them, though. I mean, I think it's okay. Texas, Texas is bullpen, um, not good. A lot of high Woba, high X-Woba, x, -Woba, x not bad. But they, they put a lot of guys on base. And while they're not giving up a big average, they're, they're putting a lot of guys on base. They're walking a lot of people. Um, I think if you want to consider Miami minis, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to full stack them, so I'm going to take them out of consideration. So I'm going to say minis only. Um, and then Boston Atlanta, you could do that with them too. But now when I look at the 150 again, I want to go look at my pitcher pool again with the stack selected. Here, we see it. We see a fifth pitcher emerge, right? Tanner Bybee, you have C. Val Soriano, C's Pablo Lopez. When I start by team stacks, it wants to give me all the Colorado. It wants to just give me everything. 20% Colorado, five men, two, uh, 45% Colorado, two men, 20% Toronto, 20% Pitt, LAD in Boston. So right away, this is telling me, based upon ceiling projections, that outside of these top three, LA and Boston is probably where, I want, where I'm going to want to get to. Um, from there, what I do is very simple. Um, I let you know more players, I let updated lineups come in. I like to just rerun this once every, I run it once every 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. Um, see what I can, you know, see what comes up, see what's new. This is also very important. Something of fact, uh, there's something here I want to talk to everybody about. Uh, when you have the slate that locks, and let's say like we get the lineup in, um, it's a 720 lock, you know, the 945 games don't have lineups yet. They come in at 720 right at lock. I want you to look at this right here. The, project, the projections updated. It's important after a lock, if you can, to go update the late swap. Come here, pull your CSV from DraftKings, drop it here, and you can run the optimizer again, and it will lock in the players that have already started. So it's very, very important. Um, but that's how I use the optimizer and how I would build a set of 150. And then from there, I would really trip. Um, and it's on a slate like tonight, I'm going to have a lot more teams in consideration than this, but I wanted to just map that out for you. Really quickly, the last thing I want to show you with the optimizer is really how to build a single entry or three entry max type of split. So first thing I do, those contests are typically a little smaller. I like to run them on projection and ceiling together um, just because you want to come in first, but you don't have to beat a bunch of people usually to do it. So what I first do is I just go to I go to five lineups. I want to keep all the same teams I have in play. I still want my five minutes. I let this run. Give me my five minutes. And you look at this here. You still have your 20% uh, max on the on the uh, five minutes. I look at this, and I want to see, okay, across five lineups, what is it giving me? Here, five-man Colorado with – uh, a 5 to one two Toronto, one Atlanta. Here, same thing, you know, five Toronto, two Colorado, one Atlanta. Five Boston, so on and so forth. And you can start to really taper this down. This is where I start to now look at team ownership from a perspective of, you know, who should I fade and who should I not. Um, when you go to the contest symbol now and you want to run for that type of, that type of contest, I would just run it on small 
if you want to run it on medium, I would do that for anything maybe like 600 um, entries, entries to maybe a thousand if you want to do medium. But let's let's run it on medium. And based upon the field size, the 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 amount. Um, let's take the 121 for instance. That would be a very sharp contest because that's a higher higher entry fee. Let's run the sims really quick and see what we get. Oh, God damn it, James. Fucking Travis Jankowski. Okay. We keep it on small, very. Run the sim. So now when I look at this, I see pitching exposures, Soriano, Cease, Pablo Lopez. Right away, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm just plugging these two in and starting, right? If, if, I'm, if I'm playing a, a three-entry max or single-entry, let, let's even just stick with single-entry. I'm plugging these two in and I'm starting there. Team exposures, Toronto, pretty big. Miami, that's very interesting because we just said maybe you want to take a mini. There's L.A., Boston, Minnesota. So these are the teams that I would look at and maybe consider for that type, for that size contest. And actually, let's go do that. We'll leave the stacks that look good in there, like Pitt and whatnot, but let's throw Minnesota in there. And now I want to change this stack size to, to 33. I'll show you what, why I'm doing that in a second. So to 33. Run five lineups on projection and ceiling. You'll see Pittsburgh showing up, Toronto. No, L you know, only LA one off, right? So maybe for a contest that size, maybe you're not necessarily considering LA, but maybe you want to also. But the projections are really loving that. Um, if I'm going to build a single entry, I'm going to just lock in the two players I have, and I want to just give me five lineups with those two. What's the five best I can make with those two pitchers locked in? Col here you have Colorado, Atlanta with a Toronto one-off. Colorado, uh, yeah, Colorado, three one-offs. Toronto, two Colorado. L.A. shows now with this here, so this combination is going to get you to L.A. And then from here, you really just kind of pick whichever one you really want. Um, but overall, that's how I would build a single entry. I would do that. And then I would also put this into DraftKings because you'll see the salaries might have some, some dollar amounts less than the 50K, some are at 50K. That's why I do that, because maybe you want to build something that's a little different. All right, maybe you can, maybe you go in the hitter sheets and you find out that there's a $4,200 outfield that looks better than Adam Duvall today. And the, sheet, the, the sheets love fucking Adam Duvall today. So maybe you do that, you, you pick your best one. Um, for a three entry max, you would just set this line up to three. And then for three entry max, the main thing you want to think about here is your pitcher pool. So I want to curate this to to have a I kind of have a three entry max system where I think of an SP one, an SP two, stack one, stack two, stack three. And how ideally I envision it is I would want SP one, SP two, um, with stack one as like your main five men. You fill in the rest. The second one would be um, SP1, whoever your SP3 is, would stack, would uh, maybe stack one again, and then that. So actually, I sorry, I mixed that up. Three starting pitchers, two stacks. Then your third lineup would be starting pitcher, starting pitcher two, with starting pitcher three, and then stack two. So I would try to build that if I can. If you can't, it, it's it's really okay. Um, but I put it as 33 because I only want one five men to show in each one so you can see the real difference or even if you wanted to do let's make it even 66 so at most you get two two out of the three in the same stack uh, two out of the three uh line will have the same team but here for the pitching pool let's say i remove waka tobias harris by the suarez hawk lopez urena let's say i want to leave it at just these four pitchers Boom, right here. C. Soriano, C. Soriano, Lopez, C. Val. Five Colorado, 
three one offs. Five Colorado, three one offs. Five Toronto, one offs. If you want to correlate this more, all you have to do is click and make just leave the five three option and leave the five two even. Run it again. C Soriano, C Soriano, Lopez, C Val. Um, I even left this to four pitchers here, so that's why you're seeing that. But this is the method to it, right? You have your main stack one, secondary stack, main stack one, secondary stack, and then LA here was your third one with uh, Toronto one-off. So the uh, two-man Toronto and Brian Reynolds. So here what I'm already thinking is like one of my lineups, if I'm starting at the engine next, should probably be Colorado and Atlanta two-man, uh, in Atlanta two-man or three-man with these two pitchers. My second one should probably be L.A. with Toronto. My third one, you could pick either one of those two and then set a three-man. But that's how I would construct a three-entry max and how I would go from there. Um, but outside of that, really the last thing that I wanted to, to share about my process is uh, when I am building the lineups, it's very important in, in the solver that – you keep rerunning as new projections come in, they get updated. And it's important that you go and when you save it, you click quick save, you pull this up here, and then you will pull up an Excel file with your lineups. It's important, you cannot just download this and upload it to DraftKings, you have to add this to the DraftKings CSV. But that's a look into my profile, into you know what I do daily. I know this is a very long-winded video, I appreciate everybody watching. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll be happy to put out more videos. This is the first time I've ever done it, so I'm kind of just, just riffing right now. But, uh, yeah, I'm here in the Discord for any questions you may have, and thank you all so much.